always around this time of year, I began thinking about that night. I'll never forget it. There I was, young, sitting in the field outside of Bethlehem. I was minding my own business, minding my sheep, other shepherds were lying nearby. It was one of those usual, nothing, out of the ordinary nights. A few stars above twinkling, only the Nile was starting to snore. We didn't mind them, tended to keep the wolves away, of course. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, whoosh, the sky lit up, and there was this he, she, it was large, like a man, but bright. It was an angel of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord shone about us. Mm -hmm. Let me tell y'all what. I hit my knees. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, Fear not. Well, I was trying, but I couldn't hold my staff still. For I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Why us? A bunch of lowly shepherds? However, there was no Q&A session. He just went right on. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Lord. The sign will be for you. You will see a baby wrapped, wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. What did he say? A baby? <laughs> lying where? I must have gotten some grass in my ears or something. Well. <laughs> then out of nowhere, the whole sky explodes with light. There are hundreds, thousands, well, there were a lot of them. Angels everywhere, and boy, could they sing. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Jesus. Fluffy. 
There goes my daily trip to the beauty salon. <laughs> you didn't need that anyway. Uh, you are gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you. But the last time I was there, I think the barber cut too much wool off the top of my head. Well, hmm. no, I don't think so. Mm, I disagree with you. I don't think so. I don't think I look okay. I think I want that wool back. <laughs> no, you are gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you. Wait, I got a joke for you. What do you call a Protestant sheep? Uh, I don't know. A bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I got another one. Okay. What do you call a sheep with no legs? Uh, I don't know yet. A clown. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. I looked into his mother's eyes and saw her sheer delight. She was glowing, smiling, and simply celebrating the birth of her new little boy. A miracle had taken place, all right. <coughs> and in a such an and in such an odd, smelly, dingy little place. But somehow we all knew we were in God's presence. No doubt about that one. And you could see it written all over her face. I quickly explained to Mary and Joseph all about the angels and what they had told us about the child in the manger. Then we gathered around Jesus and admired this wonderful little fellow. Then Mary picked him up, just a little guy he was, all wrapped up in tight, tight and cloths. Every year around this time, I get to thinking about that night when I first met him. I think about that brave young woman, Mary, and I marvel at the way she found joy. It's almost like she didn't even notice her surroundings. And if she did, she decided it didn't matter. She was gonna celebrate anyway. Christ is born, give ye glory. Christ comes from, Christ comes from heaven, meet ye him. Christ is on earth, be ye exalted. How is he contained in the womb, whom nothing can contain? And how is he in the bosom of the father, but held in the hands of the mother? There fell the divine and dead alike, <laughs> though made in the image of God, though transgression, he became wholly subject to corruption and decay. But now the wise creator seeks to fashion him anew. Amen. Christ is born, give ye glory. Amen. Amen. And my spirit has rejoiced in the God of my Savior. Amen. Wisdom Amen. and word and power. Christ our God is the Son and the brightness of the Father, and unknown to the powers both above and upon the earth. He was made man, and so, and so has won us back again. Amen. 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 A baby lying in a manger, and they were amazed to see neither scepter nor throne, nor any other property. For what is neither than a manger, and humbly than swaddling clothes. Yet there shone forth the wealth of God's divinity. Glory to thee, O Lord. Christ is born, give ye glory. Christ comes from heaven, meet ye him. He was conceived in the most unusual way. He was born in a simple stable. No fancy toys or clothes, not even a real bed to lay upon. And the, the animals were his only companions. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, our story has a happy ending. He is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He was God's own son in the flesh. He came to save his people from their sin. He, he was the true light of the world, born of baby. Raised as a man, he is our Savior, our God, our King, our friend. This baby is Jesus. Amen.
make it all this year? How did I make it this far? Through the valley and over the hills. I know it had to be gone. How did I make it? Just how I got here It's so easy to explain Amen. Amen. So, Sister 
please, would you please lead us without the prayer? God bless you. Heavenly Father, we come this day giving you all the grace and the glory, Lord, because you are the one. You are the only one, Heavenly Father, that has taken us through this pandemic, this horrible year, Father. We all came through, Lord. And I'd like to say thank you for blessing the church, blessing the people of the church, blessing the all the people that were hurt during this pandemic, who was sick during this pandemic, Lord, that you brought us all through it. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Also, Heavenly Father, we like to give thanks and praises to our Heavenly you, Lord, that you are the one, Jesus. You are the one. You are the only one, Father, in Jesus' name. I do pray. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, Amen. chapter one, uh, 2. Amen. Luke chapter 2, and I'll be reading for you verses 1 through 7.
God. What a great joy it is to be able to call your name one more time. Father, what great joy we have in our hearts today because we know that you're going to answer. Father, we know that your answer is always good and it's always right. And it's always for the betterment of your children. Father, I'm calling on you now. I'm calling on you, Father, now that you would control my actions. And Father, I want a little special something today. Would you help me celebrate your birthday? Father, would you put a fire and a joy within us? that we can stand with a smile on our face and a joy in our heart that is unspeakable, knowing that our Savior came down through 40 and two generations, and he was born in Bethlehem, baptized. But Father, that's not just why we celebrate you. We celebrate you because your Father God in heaven said that he loved us so much that he sent you here to die and pay a price that no man was able to afford. And Father, we rejoice that you said that it is finished and that all things of sin have been taken care of and the penalty has been paid by the matchless wonder of lamb without spot or blemish. And Father, again, I just feel you moving now. Because you're showing me all the good that you have done for us. And how you kept us through danger seen and unseen. Father, I just thank you. And I pray, praise you and bless your holy name. Unto you we lift our hands. And we lift every bow down knee. Father, because you are our redeemer. You are our healer. You are our way maker. Father, you're every good and every perfect gift. Father, we have you now and you are the name that is above every name. You are the only God, the true and living God, our Savior. You're the only one that has power in his name. Power to speak. And life takes place. Why do we can call that name? And healing will transform the mind of an imperfect people. Lord God, my Savior, hallelujah be unto your name, both now and forever. And it's in your son Jesus' name, Lord, that I pray this prayer. And all of God's children say it together. Amen. Amen. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his praises. It sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweet
that has no seal on it keeps running and I can't stop praising you know I've been studying him for a while now and today we're going to talk about his birth down here on earth and I messed around and got happy it did not look like what others said it was and how they described it. See, man has his version. But God has his version. And when man described it to me the first time, it was ugly. It was pitiful. It was disgracing. But in here in Luke chapter 2 today, when I read it for myself and I talked to the author, it started becoming more and more beautiful to me. And I often wonder how could a birthday celebration be so ugly? I understand that it is a time for celebration. But then when I met him, You know, he's like music to my ears, joy to my soul, and he does things that we don't always understand, and then every once in a while he'll describe what he's done, and it'll make you do some things you wouldn't normally do before. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, I'm going to move to the Word. Beginning at verse number 1. And it came to pass in those days that the decree went out from Caesar Augusta that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while, uh, forgive me for mispronouncing, I already know I'm going, Curinus was governor of governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, yeah. because he was of the house and lineage of David uh -huh. to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife who was with child. So it was what it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Yeah, yeah. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. For a little while, I want to celebrate the lamb in the manger. I want to celebrate the lamb in the manger. The passage of scripture is very popular this time of year. You will hear it uh, preached. You will hear it some, uh, some of it quoted. You will hear it misquoted. You will uh, hear some uh, logic to man's logic of its uh, description, and you will hear some spiritual enlightenment of it through the word of God. I pray that you would take time and talk with the Holy Spirit and let him describe the account that has taken place, which is so beneficial to the life of every born-again believer. Right. This is the time 
that the lamb in the manger is to be celebrated because he has come to do the work of and the will of his father. Yes, sir. And he has come in a time that many of us may not know uh, what was happening in this time period, but I want to share it with you today so that you can really get a grasp on what it took for you. What it took for you. I want you to also notice what God did for you before you were ever even a thought in your mother's womb. All right. All right. Before you were even born into a relationship of any marriage or any affair or whatever the case may have been. Yes. Before any of that transpired, there was one who was born in a manger, a lamb yes. without spot or blemish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was born uh, in a city of from the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. He was born, as the scripture speaks, in South African city. Yeah. And this baby child, he lived, I mean, he was lodged in an inn. I mean, in a, uh, in a stable and not in the inn. Amen. Well, that starts off to sound real bad. But let me kind of walk down through this text so that you might celebrate the same way that I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating the fact that this lamb was like no other lamb, but he was treated like every other lamb. Here we see in the text that a decree had gone over all of the city. It was at a time period, again, this was in South Africa, and it was at the time that the Roman Empire had put uh, had had allegiance considered over all of the world not all of the earth but all of the world meaning that they had shown their dominance that they were in control now or had a stronghold of all humanity they were having the government of the roman empire in this south african city and now the decree has been set out that they wanted everybody to be registered with the government. In other words, now they were demanding that everybody register with the government so that they could know what you was doing, how much of it you were doing, how much you were not doing, and then they had control to where they could get their portion and even a little more if they wanted to, because this is the Roman Empire now who is in control. And now they have their own God, and we spoke about that a time or two in the preaching previously, and how they had their own God in which they followed and they served, and they were utilizing the backs of other citizens in order to uplift their God. But look what happened when they were at the height of their dominance. When they had control, they were overwhelmed. They were getting ready to be overwhelmed, not by another power like a Roman Empire, but by a government that will be placed by, by a baby lamb that the government will be placed on his shoulders. See, they never really understood or had a clue what happened with this baby boy who was betrothed to me, uh, who mother was betrothed to Joseph and brought to this city to be registered. You gotta look at all of this, and, and I'm speaking on a level tone so you can hear a level mind about a level God who can do great things. Our God had come into the city where some other God had ruled over, and he was born at the time that he reached the city. And look what was happening. The decree said that they were all coming to this city from their own land to register with the government. Don't you see what's happening right here? Here we find Jesus who said that I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. And now Jesus is being brought in, and now he's under a lawful situation that a lot of people did not agree with and did not understand. But Jesus said, I didn't come to fight it. Yeah. 
I came to fulfill it. Amen. So now he was brought into this city, and while being in this city and still in his mother's womb, he still was come to do the will of his father. Yes. This baby now had come to a city, and we've always been taught that when Jesus, when the father came to this city with his wife, he got to the inn, and they would not let him in. And then they put him in a manger as if they were trying to uh, kill Jesus and they were trying to discredit Jesus. But if you slowly read the text, Jesus had not been born yet. And these people really did not recognize this woman as to be the mother of Jesus. He had not been announced as this great and special child to everybody. Now, she was just another citizen yes. with a brand new husband, yes. with a baby right in her stomach. Right. And she came to this city with her husband to register the family with the government. Amen. Now, in registering this family with the government, let's take a look at what happened. Again, they said that they were attacking Jesus and wouldn't let him in the city. That's why I say learn how to slow down and read. And also, sometimes you just can't listen to everybody. They were telling, I've been told on a number of occasions that this was an attack on Jesus. But then you need to read all of the scripture because I believe it's over in Daniel that it was prophesied that this baby would be born and put in this manger and in this livery stable and not in the end. So you have to read all of God's word instead of part of it and then listening partially to somebody else. Now, they always tell us that Jesus, that they were punishing and trying to get rid of Jesus, bringing him to the end. But notice in the text, the Bible said that when they got to the end, there was no room for him in the end. So therefore, they put him in a stable. Amen. Now, if they were really trying to punish this woman and trying to kill Jesus at this point, wouldn't it be fair to say that uh, uh, they would not have allowed Jesus to be put in a manger and wrapped and put in the stable. If you wanted to get him, you would have kept him out of the stable. You would not have given him a manger, and certainly you would not have wrapped him in swaddling clothes. But it says that there was simply no room in the end. Not something else I want you to look at in the text is that Joseph with his wife Mary came to this city and look where they ended up. They ended up at the inn. Yes. If Joseph didn't have no money to pay for the inn, why would he go to the inn? Right. Well, let me give you my observation on that. Joseph was a carpenter. Joseph had a job. And a carpenter at that time was a pretty good job to have. So therefore, it's a great possibility that if he got a new wife, he got to have some money because, you know, y'all don't like married folks that ain't got much. Right. <laughs> Could it be possible that Joseph just got there late? Joseph had some money to pay for lodging for his new wife that was carrying a baby yes, and it was almost at the time that she was supposed to have. That's maybe why he ended up at the end. And when he got to the end, they said that it was full. So therefore, they gave him lodging in the stable. Well, this my mind, I don't know about y'all, but in my mind, if they were going to charge him to stay in the inn, but they said, but we can't let you stay in the stable, I don't think that was going to be free either, because you're talking about the Roman Empire. We're talking about the government now, and if they don't get all of it, they're going to get something from you before it's all over with. So could it be possible that he just paid for some lodging to put him in the inn and in a manger? Because after all, you don't want your significant 
significant other out in the elements. You do not want them out there. And I'm still trying to lead to the point that it was already prophesied that this child here would be born in this and put in this manger. Right. Well, let's take a look at the stable and the lodging where our dear Jesus was born. And we're celebrating the lamb that was in the manger. And I'm trying to tie it all together where it makes sense to you so you can shout like I'm shouting on the inside. But I'm going to get there after a while. It's going to come up after a while because I can feel it moving just right now. Now we see where Jesus is born and placed in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. Well, we often say that it was because Jesus was poor that he had swaddling clothes and they did not have any money to get in the end. Well, we've dispelled that already. Ain't no use in coming if you ain't got nothing. So, and this man was employed. And for the life of me, I just cannot preach a poor Jesus. <laughs> I, I, it, it just is it's too difficult for me because I have to add, add, answer too many other questions when I keep having to preach that Jesus was poor and didn't have nothing. I know the scripture just like you know the scripture. Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But I also heard that Jesus was the Son of God. And I also said, I heard him say, whatever you want, and I just ask in my name and it shall be given. Amen. So something's got to be situated here. Can I tell you what I've learned about Scripture? It says, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Do you really know what that means? That means that when Jesus... Jesus came here in the earth that the world wouldn't give him nothing, but it was all right with him because his father God would give him everything. So foxes have dens and birds have nests. So in other words, government, uh, 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 welfare, a job, employment, whatever you want to do, you can withhold your stuff from me because Foxes have dens and birds have nests and the son of man has nowhere to lay his head, meaning that I'll never take credit for you giving me what I have. If I really want it, I know how to get it. I told you I'll read the scriptures before I read my resume. I'll talk to God and let him freely give me all things before I ever go and stand in a man's face and beg him for what I know I can get from God already. You don't owe me nothing and you ain't got to give me Amen. nothing but as long as I keep talking to God because I'm slicker than you think I am you keep trying to hold something from me that really don't belong to you don't you know that the birds that have nests and the foxes have dens that you're trying to hold for me don't you know that that really belongs to God because he put it in this earth and he spoke it into existence but then guess what he did for his children just like he did Adam he said look out amongst it and you name it you call it what you want to. And if I'm able to name it and call it what you want to because I've got authority by God, don't you know I ain't worried about what you hold back from me? And it's all because of the lamb that's in the manger. Amen. Well, y'all getting off track with me. Bring it back in. This baby that was born and placed in this manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. You know what they normally say, Reverend Rose, swaddling clothes ain't nothing but some rags, right? Nope, that ain't what it is. You need to do some more research. Don't you know that the practice of wiping babies in swaddling clothes still goes on yes, today? Yeah. Swaddling clothes simply were a, a garment that was placed on newborn babies. Yeah. And it is to hold that baby still and hold them in one shape. Can I tell you why? Because when it holds that baby like that, it reminds that baby that he's still in his hey. mother's womb. And then that baby can hold himself still and still go to sleep with peace. Isn't it, be, isn't it good to be wrapped up in swaddling clothes? Now, let me keep on going. He was born in a, man, uh, in a stable and placed in a manger, right? Let me tell you who else was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Don't you know that sheep was wrapped in swaddling clothes? They wrapped the baby sheep in the garments the same way they wrapped babies in, but these sheep were a little different. 
these sheep were baby sheep and they only wrapped the ones that they felt like would be perfect without spot or wrinkle and they wanted to keep them from getting out into the world and getting becoming contaminated because these sheep were chosen to be sacrificial lambs. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you ain't got to tie up Jesus and hold him in swaddling clothes to keep him from getting contaminated. He was just wrapped in that symbolism to show you that he didn't have spot or blemish. Because the other lambs, if you unwrap them, they was going to take off and get into something that they weren't supposed to get into. But Jesus... He was just resting because he was getting ready for a celebration. Because unto us, and unto us a son is given. So therefore, that's why I'm celebrating the lamb in this manger. Because he's wrapped up and he's got everything in control. Well, let me also say this. Let me get back. It is, it is amazing to me and wonderful and joy, joyous to me that he was born in a manger and stayed in a stable. Can I tell you something that you ought not ever do? You ought not ever try to take Jesus and lift him up and put him in a place where you think he ought to be. Especially when it's prophesied that he will be born and he chose to be born and placed in a place where you are. A big struggle with many Christians is you keep trying to put him up there in society when you really ought to rejoice that he's down here with you in this dark and dismal world. Well, I heard somebody say that in this livery stable, it smelled bad and it looked bad and there was all kinds of animals down there. But can I tell you, there was a lamb down there yeah. in that same livery stable. Yeah. Well, let me tell you where Jesus was born. Right. Don't you know that he came down through 40 and two generations? And guess where he landed? He did not land on Plymouth Rock. He did not <laughs> land on the White House steps. He did not land in the position of president. He did not land in the position of the head of any organizational structure that man had. He landed down in a little South African city where some people were being abused and they were confused and they had been placed out of what God had for them. And he was born right down there. And guess what it looked like? It was a it was a stable, a livery stable. If you don't believe me, take a look around in society now. It's some folks out here acting like animals. It don't smell like it ought to smell because it sure don't smell like the flower, flower that God has placed on this earth. We're in a, a horrific society. But guess what he did? He dropped himself right down off in here. And can I really tell you what the scripture is sharing with us now? He came unto his own. And he made himself of no reputation. That's why he said, I'll come and be with the people. I don't have to come down and be above the people. And I really love this thing about Jesus. Jesus doesn't sit over the top of your enemies and whoop your enemies. Jesus will sit down with you when your enemies have you in bondage and fight his way out with you that way. That's why I'm glad when I lay down with trouble, I rise with joy. That's why I don't worry where I go because I know the enemy is all around me trying to wrap me up and tangle me up, but because I didn't leave him at the high regency, but I called him in the midnight hour and he woke me up and he started walking with me and talking with me when I had to travel through the livery stables of life God was with me and when he was wrapped in swaddling clothes he showed me then all he really has to do, he doesn't have to use his arms or his legs, all he he has to do is say peace. <laughs> Lamb lying in a manger. And notice here in scripture, the lamb ain't said nothing. But everything in Amen. Now Jesus laying in a manger, showing that he came not to make any reputation of himself, but he came to save his children. He did not need you to lift him up 
And again, I know just as much scripture as you know. He says, if, and I, if I be lifted up, yeah. I'll draw men unto me. Yeah. But he said, if I be lifted up. Yeah. He didn't say, when you lift me up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let me show you how life really works. Really, if you don't have to lift Jesus up, yeah. to be honest, you need to look up. Right. You need to lift up your head. Yeah. You don't have to make him do anything. Well, well. This baby came to do it. Right. Sometimes we need to stop saying, trouble get out of my way. Uh -huh. And start saying, us get out of the way. Yeah. 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 Elementary scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where, where are you in this? What did his son come to do? His son came to die. His son came to pay the price. His son has given us and gifted us with everlasting life. What is it that you going to do? You think you going to lift him up just because you call his name is going to activate him to do what he has already said he's going to do? Do you really believe that God ain't going to move until you tell him to move? If you have to tell him to move, he probably will never move. And if he did, he'll probably go in the wrong direction. God doesn't listen to you. He already has a mission. Amen. Amen. This baby in a manger hasn't said a word, but his life is already beginning to speak. Because God had already prophesied that he would be here in a manger. And what we do as Christians is we rejoice. Because he chose to do it with us, yeah. for us. Yeah. For unto us a child is born. Yeah. Son is given. Yeah. Government will be upon his shoulder. Uh -huh. He went into this city, and when he got to this city, they registered him and, and his family, and they did not fight back. <laughs> and then it said that her firstborn son, that yeah. stayed out a while. Her firstborn son. Yeah, yeah. What did a why why said talk about a firstborn son? Was born in the city of David. Mm -hmm. Born in Bethlehem. Yeah. Oh. Well, do you really know what the definition of Bethlehem is? Right. Bethlehem is the place of bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Lamb of God. The Son of God is the bread of life. Amen. 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 Bread met bread. <laughs> but man shall not live by bread alone. Too much starch to kid. Born in Bethlehem, the city of bread, but the lamb which is the son of God, is the bread of life. Yes, now, yes. you have to do a little more research when it says bread. It doesn't actually mean bread in the sense that we know it to be Mrs. Baird or a son of God. What it's really saying is that the term is meat. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, the city of bread, yes, sir. which was a place uh, uh, that you could make some bread. All right. Where you could prosper, where you could where, where you could be somebody, well, well, well. met some meat, because mm -hmm. he was not just the bread that we know; he yeah. was the lamb mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. He was the meat. Yes, in other words, he was the nourishment that we needed in the world in yeah. which we lived in, right. and he was born in a city where the city thought they had control. But you know, you're pretty good when you that way and you got bread in your yeah. city. But it ain't nothing like being coming off of a bread diet and getting a little meat. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Now the lamb was in the city. 
And the, and the lamb didn't say anything, but he let everything fall into order. And the, can you see how powerful God is to where he does not have to speak, but transition takes place the moment he steps up on the scene because the lamb, again, was wrapped in clothes. He couldn't walk. He couldn't move his arms. He couldn't say nothing. He wasn't talking yet. He was still goo-goo and God, God. But look what <laughs> happened. He still had power. You know he got power just in his body. If you don't believe me, read the rest of the scripture. It says a woman touched the hem of his garment, and he said, I feel power leave my body. Well, you can't feel power leave your body if you ain't got no power in your body. And, and when you got power, can you, I tell you what I've seen out, out of some people, sometimes when people don't speak, it shows more strength than it does when people do speak. Because now we're teaching the text, trying to see why we didn't get Jesus in, a, in, a, in, in the room in the end. We try to figure out why they didn't give him a penthouse suite and why they didn't lay out the red carpet for him. And Jesus is saying to us, I don't need no penthouse suite down here and I've got a kingdom that I have created, that I live in up there. Ain't not, you can't decorate and color nothing and paint nothing to where it will suffice what I'm really accustomed to. I am the one who put the color in the paint. I am the one who put the brick on the wall that you have. That, and you think you're going to impress me by when I come here, put me up in the best that there is in life. I am life. So Jesus never had to speak. He said, but just put me down here where my people are, the one I actually came to get. And when he put us down, when he came down and was placed in a place where the meek and the lowly live, his life itself spoke volumes. I got to go a little fat uh, further than the text that I read to you, but I want to share something with you that the uh, that was an announcement that took place after verse number seven, going into verse number eight and nine, and it says to us now. There were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Yeah. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Yeah. For there is born unto us this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I'm about ready to close now. But really what I want you to see is, did you notice that after Jesus was born and he was placed in a place that man didn't think he should be placed in, nobody went and said, do you know that that's Jesus? Do you know that that's the Savior? And you can't keep him in a manger. You can't keep him in a livery stable. That's the Savior. And no one stood up to say this. No one was able to come forward and say, I'll even pay for him. Or I will even let him come stay in my house because it's Jesus. Well, don't get afraid because many of you ain't invited me in a long time. So don't, don't I, I ain't going to bash you over the head with that because I told you it is God's work and not our work. Look what happened. The Bible says that some angels came and the angels came and spoke to those who were out in the field, spoke to some shepherds out in the field that was taking care of sheep. And don't you know it ain't nobody better to take care of a lamb than a shepherd? Now Jesus has sent angels. Without speaking a word, angels have come and talk to the shepherds that were out in the field. When we look out in the field and see shepherds out there watching over sheep, we have to recognize that those were low-income folks. Amen. 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 <sighs> now Jesus sends angels not to correct those that had much or thought they had it going on, but he spoke to servants. He spoke to low-income low to no income. He, he went out of the city and to the countryside. 
In other words, those people were considered to be uncivilized. Those were laborers. Those were not white collar workers. Those were blue collar workers. And he sent them down and he sent his angels down to make an announcement to them. Let me tell you how salvation is really granted. Usually salvation is granted to those who have given it up yes. on the world. Amen. Those who have said that I can't make it and I don't have it. I don't have means to get ahead. I'll never be able to reach the Joneses. I am who I am. And I don't know what this life has for me. And they end up being blue collar workers at best. But let me show you how God works. God says I'll send angels to make an announcement. Well, y'all didn't catch that one. God says to us, I'll send angels. Y'all still didn't catch it. How can they hear without a priest? Who is the angel of the house of God? Who is the word bearer on behalf of Jesus Christ? God sent a messenger. He sent the preacher. He'll send another believer. He'll send somebody that will make the announcement. And the people that hear the announcements are usually the ones that are sick and tired and sick and tired of being with the world and trying to get ahead with the world and says that I need somebody to give me some hope. And hope comes from the word of God, which is sent by his angels, those that he has prepared the word and placed it in them. And he'll come to you when you're at your darkest hour, not when you're in the city bright lights and you've got it going on, but when you're down and everybody says you ain't no good, you'll never be anything, you'll, you'll never achieve anything in life. And God said, I'm going to send you a gift. And I'm not announcing that a child is born and a son is given. Speaks to us this way and lets us know that he comes to those that the world don't want. Comes after those that are worthless to society as it has been said. Truth be told, you know when you're actually worthless, the devil don't want you either. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Y'all act like I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Do you know when you're lazy, uneducated, ignorant, hateful? Mean. Mm -hmm. Don't you know when you like that, the devil don't bother you? Let's be honest. If you full of fight and you fight any and everything, you think the devil going to fool with you? The devil wants the same that God desires. He wants the intelligent. He wants the humble. He wants the meek. He wants the lowly. He wants the educated. Well, let me show you how he does it. The devil will take you when you want to be like that. God takes you and makes you like that. I told you growing up in school, and I'm really through preaching now, y'all didn't shout and it's your own fault. <laughs> growing up in school, I never was an A student. I never was. I had the capabilities because I believe I could learn anything I wanted to learn. I had the capabilities, but I never was an A student. 
But you know what God shared with me? He said, you got the capability so I can do something with you. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a D student and an F student, and that's why I said, been there. I've been high and low. I've learned to be content. <laughs> when I was a D student and a failing student, I noticed that nobody wanted to fool with me. <laughs> Those in the talented and gifted program didn't want to fool with me. The gamblers, the dope dealers, and all, they didn't want to fool with me. I wasn't beneficial to them. But can I tell you what happened? Jesus said to me, come as you are. And the position that I was in, it was just like what we learned is about scripture. Come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden. Because I told you, my testimony is I've been a believer before I left my parents' house. The sins that I have committed were sins from one who was already a believer. Some of y'all were sinners and then became a believer. I was a believer and became a sinner. I accepted Christ when I was a little bitty kid. I know I was saved. But as I got older, I went to the left to the left. But Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and the heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And then he says, my yoke is easy and my burdens light. That's why I celebrate the lamb. Because when I found out that he was in the stables, I found out that the oxen was in the stable, and he put a yoke on him. But I ain't worried about it because his yoke is easy yeah, yeah. and his burdens are light. Yeah, yeah. I found out that there was some other stuff in the livery stable yeah. that fits my bill. Yeah. I didn't walk like I was supposed to walk and I didn't have what I thought I was supposed to have. I didn't stay in the finest of places. I was a livery stable de uh, dweller and I'm glad that Jesus came because that's where I met him at my lowest point. I met him in a place that others said was unlivable and uninhabitable but I found out that there was one living down there just waiting on my beck and call. We always talk about how Jesus will come way down and pick you up. But let me tell you something. When I reached down and I made it to my lowest point, I discovered that he was already there because he was born in Bethlehem and he was slain before the foundation of the world. He died on a hill called Calvary and up there he rose again on the third day with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. I told you, you didn't want to shout I'll do it for you. I'm so glad that this child is born and this son is given. You know who he is, don't you? His name is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He did not need for man to lift him up. He rose with the work that he has already done and the best way to rise is to be obedient to the one who has given you this assignment. Can I tell you my favorite? My favorite is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is a step-by-step -step process. What God did on high was reach this way and send his son down to the multitude and grab me. And I told this a revolving door because when he reached down, he didn't stop. Then he picked me up and he's coming back again and he'll take me down. And then the judgment will take place, and after that I'll go on a little bit higher. Up there won't be no livery stable up there, but it'll be some godly living up there. Won't be no manger to lay in, but I'll have a knee that I can bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Happy birthday, Jesus. I thank God for my sake. This manger experience makes me want to shout all the day long. Because he was born. 
And he did the will of his father. And he did not need anybody to make him do it. He was obedient unto death. Leaving the death of the cross. And the Bible says that he is our Lord and our Savior. Put that together with the Lamb. Put the Lord and Savior in the livery stable. If you really want to love him, think about the fact that he didn't just look down at you. All right. But he came down and dwelt with you. If you got a struggle with trying to determine who's God and what's God and who's the biggest God and who's the best God, let me ask you a question. Would you want a God who you have to describe and you got to promote or would you want a God that can promote himself? Yeah, 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 yeah. If your God needs you to rub him and shake him and, and, and hope he do something for you, how much of a God is he? And how much more can you appreciate a God that can come down and suffer everything that you suffer and show you that I'll make a way out of nowhere. What you going through? Let me show you I can handle it. It's tough on you because they're lying on you. Look at them lying on me. It's tough on you when they won't give you nothing. And then I got to sleep in a man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's tough on you to have to do without. And I got to come down off my throne and give up heaven's glory and be wrapped in humanity. Can you see how much he loves you? He came down and a pinch hurts you. But they pierced him in the side. It hurts you when they incarcerate you, yes, but they killed him. Yes, a death that he did not deserve no, no, no. because it really belonged to you. Amen. Do you see the love yet? Amen. You deserve to die. Yes. And he said, I know you deserve to die because I made the rule. The wages of sin is death, yes. but the gift of God is everlasting life. Yes. But don't worry about it because I'm going to die for you. Amen. Oh, what manner of love is this? I got to go now. Amen. Amen. Truly, our hearts have been blessed with the word of God. At this time, we will extend the invitation to maybe someone who's lost in sin. Maybe there's someone needing prayer or or even God has placed in your heart and this is where he wants you to worship. Truly the door of the church is now open. Will there be one to come? Will there be one to come? The door of the church is now open. <clears throat>
that no one should reject the calling of the gospel at this time. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our businesses. If we have any visitors that care to be recognized, we will allow you to be recognized at this time. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I live right down the street. I've been standing up about a year, and I've been looking for me a church. Yes, ma'am. And uh, God sent me here this morning, and I came, you know. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Amen. 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 Thank God for today. I thank God for bringing me here today. Amen. Amen. I thank God for life. Amen. 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 Glory, hallelujah to everybody. Amen. Ma'am, did we get a name from you? No, sir, nobody took my name. Well, would you like to tell us your name, ma'am? My name is Ethelene Richardson. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you, Sister Richardson. Amen. Amen. Our pastor is uh, informing us that our pastor was going to go. Okay, there will be a cancellation. We'll be canceling noonday service as well as Bible study to next year. Amen. So we just want to keep you informed and in the loop, amen. Also, brother, chill. Uh, uh, the Bible study, it still will be online. Okay. We still have our Bible study online, but we will not be having our noonday services until New Year. So it's two weeks. But we still, you still can go online and we still have a Bible chat. Amen. 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 Also, brother, children has informed us that there are some sweets that he's starting his business. So there are some sweets if you would like to know the price or sweets wise, you're more than welcome to check him out. Amen. Amen. And speaking with Pastor Light's permission, uh, there's peroxide, peroxide for anyone that may need it, and it will be on the other side. Amen. 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 Also, uh, I know Sister Jenna has placed a lot of the cards that the different ones brought on the table. So if you would look to your right when you go out, and Pastor and wife got some nice gifts over there. Don't Amen. go home and go home without them. Amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, I know where to put this uh, in the service, but uh, keep uh, my family, my mother especially, uh, for.